Just this June, Apple held WWDC 2023, announcing their long-awaited and long-speculated VR headset with features that can make a baby boomer giddy with excitement. All, of course, with a low, low price of 3,500 USD. Typical Apple. Or is it? <laughs> <laughs> the Apple Vision Pro is probably the most advanced AR VR technology on the market, boasting all the premium features of a high-end headset, including incredibly high-resolution displays, eye tracking, face tracking, and hand tracking. The only thing holding it back is the Apple consistent overpricing. But is that actually true? Now, before you all come after me with pitchforks and fire screaming out of touch, I am not rich, and neither I nor the average consumer can afford this seemingly egregiously priced product. But people seem to neglect a few major facts. First of which, have you seen the prices of VR headsets? Yes, Meta may be at the top of the game in terms of price performance from the normal consumer, but it has no real comparability to the level of pure, raw power and hardware the Vision Pro offers. The only thing that can be properly contrasted to this marvel of technology is the six and a half grand Vario XR3. And that's not even counting the $1,500 yearly subscription and the very, very expensive external hardware required to run it. Now, obviously there are also headsets such as the Pimax lineup, but let's be honest, Pimax has a history of being sketchy, expensive, and frankly, incapable of delivering at best. Now, all this isn't to bash on Vario. It has its own respective perks. Primarily, it does have a special 1080p focal point lens with a whopping 70 PPD. The reason it's so condensed is because it has a very small eye-tracked focal point screen, with the rest of the peripheral vision being 2880 by 2720. The Vision Pro, on the other hand, has a pixel density of around 41.5 to 48 PPD per eye. However, the Apple Vision Pro actually does have a larger overall resolution, and while we don't have exact specs, we do know it has a 4K resolution display per eye, delivering over 13 million in pixels. That's a lot of pixels. The resolution might be comparable, but the main reason the Vision Pro is better is because of its onboard hardware. The Vario requires some insanely beefy external hardware and a ton of wires to transfer that data. Hardware that, all on its own, could cost you thousands of dollars. Meanwhile, the Vision Pro boasts both an M2 chip and a brand new R1 chip created solely for VR purposes. While the M2 isn't extremely comparable to a highly powerful PC, it is far more capable than any other onboard VR headset processing unit, and it is fully integrated into the headset and comes with the price. The R1 chip's primary focus is to free up the M2 by handling all the virtual reality inputs such as the hand and other spatial tracking features, meaning you can get all the capabilities of the M2 at your disposal. This kind of raw, onboard power has never been seen before on a virtual reality headset, especially one so small. There's also a potential of the M3 actually being released inside the Vision Pro as well, since it's coming out next year and the M3s have already been released, which would obviously give it even more power than it already is supposed to have. This fact alone completely separates the XR3 and Vision Pro, bringing them to, at minimum, equal levels of usefulness. And again, the Vision Pro is almost half the price. But of course, there are other things that make the Vision Pro worth its high price tag. A massive bonus for the Vision Pro, aside from its simple hardware and resolution, is the fact that it's Apple making this product. While they might not have the best reputation, Apple is known for their extraordinary functional ecosystem and highly refined software, meaning that this headset is probably going to be the most practical one you can buy to date. Marcus Brownlee even called the experience of using the eye and hand tracking in tandem like magic, and you won't find that kind of quality and snappiness any anywhere else but an Apple product. Productivity would actually be practical, given the high resolution and built-in chip, you would be able to basically pack a full-on multi-monitor PC into one small device. I'd also imagine, despite it working entirely on its own, you could use it with things like a MacBook and have multiple screens for things like college or obviously work-related activities. Another important aspect of this being an Apple device is Apple's ability to get developers on board. If any company is going to get supported apps, it's going to be Apple, which means that you are most likely going to see some very cool things with this headset. Not to mention the build quality and form factor. While the Vario is undoubtedly a high quality build, the Vision Pro has beat it entirely with a round, within around a pound weight 
of about 450 grams, while the Varia weighs about 980 grams with the hide strap. I should mention, this is estimated from testers. We don't actually know this info to be sure. For reference, the Quest 2, the most popular VR headset to date, is about 503 grams. Now, they did make the battery pack external, so that is probably why, but the actual physical size of the headset is much slimmer than other popular and premium headsets. Again, this is with pretty powerful onboard hardware, meaning you can do some pretty serious stuff with such a small package. Now, obviously, I've skipped over some of the finer details, such as the gigantor amount of sensors the designers jitter clicked onto this thing, including things such as a true depth sensor and even a LiDAR sensor. I'd also like to say there are certainly drawbacks to the headset, such as the external battery and, to be honest, the lack of VR market for everyday consumers. Apple doesn't work well with Steam, and usually people don't buy Apple products to game unlike most VR enthusiasts who primarily buy such pricey tech for that reason. The reason Apple coming into the playing field is so influential is because they are bringing a new standard to the VR market, and hopefully they will make VR devices much more common and create a larger market for both devices and applications. It gives me hope that Apple users tend to spend a lot of money on Apple products solely for the productivity purposes, so we could see a lot of really cool things coming into the VR world very soon. The takeaway from all this is that compared to any other technology currently on the market, the Vision Pro blows the competition away for, frankly, a fraction of the price of other industry leaders, and it makes this tech actually commercially available and at least decently practical to consumers. Rather than the Vario, which is seemingly pretty exclusive to businesses and developers and would have no use for the average user, bringing in no one but the already existing VR enthusiasts. So to round off this video, I will ask you a question. Is the Apple Vision Pro really overpriced? I would argue no, but you can let us know your thoughts in the comments below. In the meantime, would you like to check out some more Apple content featuring the recently released USB-C AirPods Pro 2, or maybe how a 12-year-old MacBook holds up in 2023? Thank you for coming to my TED Talk.